how did you get into art? How did you know this is what you wanted to do? My love for art came from my uh, grandmother and my mother, who both loved the arts. My grandmother uh, was a director at a large playhouse in Pretoria, South Africa. Did that for years, um, which influenced my mother. She used to go there a lot. They grew up generally with a love, um, not only for the theater, but also sculpture. And I remember my grandmother had, you know, Van Gogh's um, church um, painting poster of it, along with uh, uh, Michelangelo's David, uh, a postcard of the sculpture. And for, you know, this stuff influenced me as I was growing up seeing it. So I enjoyed art in general, just, just from, from being around it. And when I was in high school, I started drawing and I seemed to have somewhat of a talent for that, I would say. Um, but I stopped drawing after high school and it, and it stayed away for a long time. I didn't start back at art drawing until I think I was 28. And it was when I was working uh, on the phone and I would get bored, and so I started to doodle. And the doodles turned into more elaborate, elaborate drawings, which eventually I uh, turned into coloring. I started adding color to those drawings. And the color is really what made that stuff pop. And from that point, to be honest with you, I mean, that's where I met Stella, and she saw my drawings, and she said, you know, why are you working here? What are you doing? You're an artist you know, you should paint and, and I'll sell your artwork. I rejected that idea. I mean, I was making pretty good money in sales and I know there's no money in art. So for a year, I rejected that idea. But during the process, during, during that time period, I was shown over and over and over that that is what I was supposed to be doing is painting. You know, there's just these crazy signs every day, multiple signs a day. So I was uh, bought my first oil paints that Christmas and first canvas. And I remember Stella went out and bought a big canvas and that scared me. And I started painting. Prior to that, I was really getting bored with life. And I actually, I asked God to give me something. I needed interest in life again. I wanted to be interested by the simple things like you are when you're a kid. Um, so it gave me this new interest for life in general and a purpose in life, which I was missing previous to that. God gave me interest in color. What inspires you? Well, life, uh, that's the thing is, um, I found that if you don't live life, you know, there's times that I've just sat and painted day in and day out and not left my studio. And eventually um, inspiration dries up. You absorb and are inspired by different things in life. Um, you know, to go more specifically, one of the things that I paint a lot of the roses. So, you know, what was the inspiration for the roses? <clears throat> it's an interesting little story. <laughs> so, there was this girl. <laughs> that I really liked. And we even went out. And I'm not even going to mention her name. But we went out. And we broke up. And then she wasn't interested in me anymore. She... You know, she was um, she she was an inspiration to me a little bit in the art, but not not a lot. But she did inspire the rose paintings. I thought, well, you know what I can do. The only thing I know how to do. I don't have a bunch of money. I don't have. I don't, I don't have the best physique. I'm not a painter. And so maybe I can paint a picture that will make her fall in love with me. This was really my my thought process. And when I imagined what that picture would be, it was actually her. A picture of her painting for her standing in front of a wall of flowers. A full just, and it was going to be a big painting. But the background is a full wall of, of red roses. I, um, and that concept just stayed in my mind for a while. I ended up painting her um, very similar to Titian's Venus, which is a famous painting. Um, 
she posed for that, which is great. Um, but I never did the rose painting until a few years later, I got uh, asked to do an art show. Um, and they asked if I could do flowers for the art show. And so I thought, well, this would be a great time to start you know, um, experimenting with those rose paintings. So I went ahead and I did the first Pulse rose painting um, years later, not in reference to her, but what's crazy about it is I painted that picture and just very briefly, the reason why it's called Pulse is I, I, I started doing these roses. I drew them all. That first rose painting, I drew it one night. The next day, I was going to wake up and paint it. The next day, I woke up, I turned on the TV, and the Pulse shooting in Orlando. And that Americans around the country still trying to come to grips with what's now being called the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. minutes down the street for me and I watched it you know for an hour and a half whatever it was I was completely affected by it and I got up and I took the red paint in my hands and I painted that first pulse painting with my hands with red paint inspired by what I had just seen you know uh, so I had decided that I'm gonna do like one rose painting for each victim and so that's why we're still I think we're up to number 21 on the Pulse paintings. So there's kind of a two-part combination to what it inspires the roses. When, when you think about your legacy as an artist and what you want to leave the world, like when I think about Van Gogh, when I think about MC Escher's and Salvador Dali, guys you introduced me to when we were kids, when I think about those guys and kind of that legacy they've left, um, it's enormous and there's a very specific style that when you think of Salvador Dali you immediately you see something you go that's either by him or inspired by yeah, him absolutely. when you think about your legacy as an, art, as an artist what do you want people to remember about you or what's the perception you want people to have about you your style etc well You know, clearly my my art is heavily influenced by Van Gogh, which many people see it. And it's it's kind of crazy because I don't use a post-impressionistic style, which is what he used, um, but people still see that style in it. And so to some degree, I do want to give back to Van Gogh. I would have never painted without his life story. You know, which leads into a whole nother thing of why I started painting. I mean, you, you, you kind of asked uh, about that. And, and just so just to make that statement, uh, finish that statement, you know, I read Van Gogh's life story numerous times. He was rejected by the church to be a missionary. I, I'm summarizing this up because it's a long story, but essentially he wanted to please his dad by becoming a minister just like his dad. And each ministry school rejected him. They, they failed, whatever it was. Eventually, he found one that sent him out, sent him out to be a missionary. But he started preaching to the poor people in London that lived in the sewers, and they kicked him out. And starts living with coal miners. I guess you know maybe preaching to them. They don't necessarily say that, but uh, he starts drawing the coal miners and goes on, as you know. You know, to become one of the most influential or at least most popular artist of the day. Um, you know, what I liked about that story was two things. One, he didn't um, allow the, re he tried to do what was right. And even though he was doing what was right and was uh, shut down for it by the church, he, 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 he still lived for God by painting. Like, I'm inspired by his work for God. Like, I, I know that Van Gogh was inspired by God. It showed me that you could, you don't have to be a missionary to live for God. You could be an artist. I guess that's, you know, that was part of it right there. You could paint for God. 
Huh. Who would have thought? The other part of that was Van Gogh was not popular in his lifetime, obviously. So one painting. It, so I like that idea that I could do something now that will um, that I don't have to get success for it right now. 